Okay, so for the rest of the talk, I'm going to be focusing on the most common thrift species, which is Western flower thrips and onion thrips. And I'm going to stop, start by talking about when and where they are coming from. Like any pest, thrips can enter the greenhouse in one of two ways. They can either sneak in on imported plants, or they come in from outside through openings like vents and doors. Several years ago, we did a study at Vineland to determine how many thrips were coming in on imported cuttings. We found that on average, there are about five to 10 thrips per 100 cuttings of chrysanthemums and spring annuals. And those numbers can really add up when you multiply them by like thousands of cuttings every week. Um, and that's ultimately adds up to a big problem. But unfortunately we weren't paying attention. We were guilty of the same thing about making assumptions. We weren't super paying attention to which thrip species um, in this first trial. So we repeated it in 2019 um, with mum cuttings. And we did confirm that only Western flower thrips were found on these cuttings. So this suggests that cuttings are an unlikely infestation source for onion thrips, um, at least in chrysanthemums. That same year, we surveyed thrip species in chrysanthemum greenhouses in the Niagara region. Uh, we put up sticky cards both inside and outside the greenhouses. And thankfully, the identification features that we need to, to differentiate onion thrips and western flower thrips are still visible on sticky cards. So we were able to separate out our card count data by species pretty easily. The majority of the thrips on cards were Western flower thrips, both inside and outside the greenhouse. In fact, there were actually twice as many Western flower thrips on the outside cards compared to the inside cards. And the number of the thrips that we collected on these cards outside indicates there's, that there is a large Western flower thrips population in the landscape in Niagara. Now, this was a significant finding because when Western flower thrips first arrived in the region, researchers at Agriculture Canada determined that at that time, Western flower thrips wasn't able to overwinter in Southern Ontario. Evidently, they have adapted to our climate and they're no longer restricted to the greenhouse, at least here in Niagara. So in this graph, I've standardized the card captures by converting the counts to the proportion of total thrips that were caught per sample, uh, per sampling interval. Um, and by standardizing them, you can really see very clearly how the pattern, the seasonal pattern of Western flower thrips inside the greenhouse closely follows that of the outside population. And this tells us that the Western flower thrips in these greenhouses are mostly coming from outside. Before now, we've paid a lot of attention to stopping thrips, uh, Western flower thrips that are coming in on plant material. And we kind of ignored the thrips that were coming in from outside. Um, and many growers have adopted cutting dips, which is great. Um, and that prevents, you know, any of the thrips that you're importing from, you know, propagators down south, possibly super pesticide resistant Western flower thrips. Um, but clearly based on this information, that's only solving half of the problem. Just like Western flower thrips, we also found onion thrips on both the outside and inside sticky cards. During the summer months, the changes in the thrips populations inside the greenhouse do closely match what was happening outside the greenhouse, albeit a little less perfectly than Western flower thrips did. But a notable difference between onion thrips and Western flower thrips, however, is that onion thrips continue to persist inside the greenhouse long after the pressure from outside date died off. So based on this data, we can conclude that the outdoor thrips populations are most likely the initial infestation source for onion thrips. However, once they get inside, they establish themselves in the greenhouse and they stick around longer. In 2019, both thrips species peaked in July and August. So if you want to prevent thrips establishment, this is the key time to focus your thrips management efforts. And the best thing you can do to manage thrips just like any pest, is to keep them out of your crop in the first place. Mass trapping is sometimes overlooked as an IPM tool, but it can prevent a lot of thrips from reaching your crop. Previous work by Rose Boutenhaus found that mass trapping is most effective at catching dispersing thrips, which means that they're actually really well suited to intercepting these thrips incoming from outside. 
So my advice is to go bananas with your mass trapping in the summer, especially in July and August. Research by Omafra found that wet blue type cards continue to work for at least eight weeks, which means that you can set up your cards at the beginning of July and they will keep going and trapping thrips throughout the entire period of this high thrips pressure. Now there's an ongoing debate over which color of sticky card Western flower thrips prefer. Some studies have found yellow is better and others have found blue is better. Well, a new study that came out this year might have found the reason for these conflicting results. It turns out that different Western flower thrips populations can develop different color preferences. They tested the color preferences of a population of thrips from Germany and a population from the Netherlands. One preferred blue and the other preferred yellow. Um, so that then begs the question, which color do thrips in Niagara prefer? Previous work by Omafra found that yellow cards caught more thrips than blue, regardless of the manufacturer. Um, during the study, these greenhouses had more than 85% Western flower thrips, but the card counts weren't differentiated based on species. In my 2019 survey, which did look at both species separately, um, onion thrips preferred yellow at all three locations that I sampled at, and Western flower thrips preferred yellow at two of the three locations. We don't exactly know what was happening at the third location. I suspect maybe lighting or greenhouse cover had something to do with it, but we don't really know. But the moral of the story is, is that around here, yellow is the best choice overall. Um, although, you know, with some variation based on location, but unless you're going to run your own trial in your own greenhouse to confirm which, which color works best for you, just stick with yellow. <laughs> 